Praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark. Welcome to Impact. Impact your words. It's time. Yes, it's time to make that change. And we are the people who's going to do it. Oh. Impact your words is what we're aiming for. So just open up your heart. Today's message will inspire you. Then stay tuned for information to connect with me as I impact this world for Jesus Christ. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. Since, the, since thou wast precious in my sight. Thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. Yes, I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. I'm going to jump down to verse number 21. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of my burnt offerings. Neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. incense. Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money. Neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices, but thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. I, even I, am he that blotted out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and I will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Verse 21, I have formed thee myself. Uh, they shall show forth, uh, this people have I formed myself. Verse number one, I have created thee. Um, verse number one, I formed thee. I made thee. Verse number seven, again, I call thee by my name. I have created thee. Uh, you for my glory. I formed you. I have made you. Verse number seven. For our subject matter on this morning, you belong to God. You belong to God. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Speak to us through this teaching, through this, through this powerful word on today. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 43. As we have read on this morning, a very powerful text where God begins to declare, amen, his ownership 
of his people. He starts out by saying, I formed you. He continues to say, I made you. He continues to say, I created you. And then he says, even though you're going through waters and floods, I will be there. Amen. Though enemies encamp around you, you don't have to be afraid. I will be with you. Amen. Even though you're going through storms and hardship, uh, it's going to be all right because you are mine. I mean, look at the Lord comforting his people with these powerful words. And he goes on again. He said, I'm going to bless your kids. I'm going to call your children from afar. Amen. The enemy will not exact upon you. I'm going to, I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to protect you. Why? Because you are mine. You're coming to some hard times, but you are mine. I have forgiven you of your sins. I have covered your transgressions. I have remembered them anymore. I'm not holding them against you. But then he goes on to say, but you're making me do all this. Uh, uh, and you've not honored me. I keep serving. I keep honoring you, protecting you because you're mine, but you have not honored me. You've not brought the tithe. You've not brought the offering. You've not honored me with the sweet corn. He said, now you got to, you got to cut that out. You got to stop acting like that. You, you, you got to remember me. Don't forget that I'm the one that made you. Don't forget the one that I'm the one that protects you. I'm the one that raised you up. I created you. I blessed you. You're blessed today. And I blessed you, said the Lord. And he says, I did all that because you are mine. I want to take my time today and share with you, amen, this prophetic word to the body of Christ that you belong to God. Sometimes we forget that, amen. Sometimes we um, are, are very clear that he belongs to us. Uh, Jesus is mine. He's mine. I got the Lord in my heart. But we begin to forget that we belong to him. We belong to him. I belong to God. That's why people can't do anything to me they want to because I belong to God. That's why when all my efforts run out, I still trust in the Lord that he's going to bring it to pass because he's responsible for me because I belong to God. That's why when, amen, uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction are all in the land, virus and sickness and disease, earthquakes in, in, in diverse places, wars and rumors of wars, amen, when all of these things are happening around me, as the passage says here, even when the floods come up, I, I'm not going to be afraid of that because I belong to God. God gives me immunity in this community. God's hand of protection is upon me. I wear his name. I wear his badge. I look like him. I act like him. Hey Amen. He has invested so much in me. And, 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 and in spite of all that, he has forgiven me of my sin. He has brought me into right relationship with him and right standing with him. I belong to God. If you belong to God, go ahead and clap your hands. You know you're not worried about stuff. Job change, not worried about it. Money change, not worried about it. People change, not worried about it. Sometimes it looks like I'm by myself. I'm not worried about it. There are conundrums that face me, things I can't figure out. I'm not worried about it because I belong to God. I belong to God. People have a tendency to have a sense of pride and even walk, amen, in a little bit of arrogance when they belong to something that they feel like is powerful. You know, you have people that have joined uh, fraternities and sororities and, and uh, uh, gangs and on the smaller stage, gangs out in the secular world, gangs. How about even in uh, some, uh, some boroughs, uh, people are part of the mafia. They become untouchable. Don't fool with them because they're a part of this. Hey, hey, this person person is um, a part of this group or they're part of that group and they begin to say hey you can't fool with them because they are a whatever they are a they are I remember being in Los Angeles California a man uh, one of the first times I was preaching at least 25 years ago and 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 the people wanted to show me around they wanted to show me uh, downtown and uh, they want to show me the uh, the coastline and the beach and whatnot but they also wanted to show me the hood and and I was very aware when I was in Crip uh, 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 I was with the crib, so I then uh, say, not, okay, now take, you, you look at Bishop, take that red towel off. We're going over to the other side. You can't, I got to take my towel. That's right, dude. We can't be riding around with no red short in this community. Really? 
really. And the person that was showing me around uh, was from down the way, and he was not a part of the Bloods or the Crips, but he had friends on both sides. And he saw one of the guys walking on the road, uh, and he, he pulled over and said, man, is the block hot? And I'm trying to figure out what's going on. In other words, is anything happening? Anything about to jump off? I got the man of God in the car. We're about to ride through and check some things out. Is the block hot right now? Are we good right now? The guy pulled out his little flip phone back in those days and he said, da -da -ba -da -ba -da he said oh man, you good. You got passage. Basically, he said, hey, there's a, there's a blue ram truck coming through here. Don't fool with the ram truck. It's good. I know it's not the right color, but he's all right. A, B, C, D, F. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing how people have a sense of comfort, how, have a sense of protection, because who they are connected with, what family they are a part of. You don't mess with this one. I remember, hey, man, coming up in, in, in John Adams High School, I was the youngest of three boys, and, and my oldest brother, Donnell, was already in the gang. He he, he, had already, he had already done some things, like he had already established that these guys, you know, uh, you know I'm a clerk and I don't play. And then my other brother came up and, and he had his own mark. And so when I came, uh, it was like, oh, this is one of those Clark boys. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and people understood, oh, you don't mess with him because he got two old, older brothers and they both crazy. They crazy. So leave. So I was good. They didn't even know. I was called to preach. I, went, I was trying to pray and prophesy for people. <laughs> Do the Lord's work. <laughs> but they said, no, this is a killer. He might be a killer in the making. Because we know whose family he's a part of. Ownership is this unique thing. I want to talk about ownership. Um, uh, today, um, I'm not talking about being a part of a family, a mafia, a group, a club, a gang. I'm talking about being owned by God, that God is your backer. He's your co-signer. He's your maker. He is the one, amen, that protects you and provides for you. Ownership, let me deal with it. Ownership is this interesting thing. It's, it's interesting, you know, that we have a sense of ownership. And I, I say it's interesting because naked we came into the world and naked we leave it. Like you didn't come here with nothing and when you leave, you leave with nothing. But we have a way of saying this is mine. This is mine. And it's sort of abstract. Like we start off with my toys. These are my toys. Even though you didn't buy them as a little kid, you have a sense, this is mine, mine. The little kid can't even talk, but it's mine. This sense of possession. My sandwich, my donut, and it's about to be eaten, but it's yours. You have the sense of his mind. And, you, and then you, it, it, we even feel this way about people. That's my mother. Like possessive, like that's my dad. These are my children. You don't, don't put your hands on my kids. Hey, 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 you're getting too close to my car. This thing you're making payments on, right? This thing that the bank will come and take any day. Yeah, you, you're getting too close to my car. Oh, yeah, I like that furniture. I'm going to make that couch mine. That's my couch right there. We used to play a game when I was a kid. We was riding in the car, and they, we'd say, that's my car. Come on now. That, that's my car. We'd even advance it to that's my house. You see a nice one? That's my house. That's mine. This, this sense of ownership that we have as humans is interesting because really you don't own anything. That's my wife. Boy, you better do right because um, she might look like she's somebody else's. That's my husband. Pray hard. Pray hard, because somebody might be borrowing your husband. That which you think is yours. Yours. What city are you repping? Oh, Cleveland, that's my city. That's my town. Browns, that's my, I mean, the, um, that's my team. You know, this is my, that, that whole piece of ownership, it's mine. That's mine. We stand with them. We claim it. We say it's ours. And yet, the ideal of ownership comes from creating. That's why the mother said, that's my child. I created this child. I gave birth to this child. I birthed the child. Why, why, why is it mine? I purchased it. I spent my money on this iPad. These are my glasses. I bought them. I paid for them. 
But the last thing that brings ownership into play is more unique than birthing, creating, or purchasing. It's agreement. It's covenant. Like, you know, when did um, Lydia become yours, Pope, or Veneta become yours? When did that husband, be, when did he become last mine? When? Did that happen at the altar when he said, I do? When the paper signed? That's when he was yours? Or was it, was it when they looked at you and said, okay, like y'all wasn't even married yet. I need to close my eyes and preach through this. <laughs> y'all wasn't even married yet. And she gave herself to you. He gave himself to you. There was money exchange. There was fluid exchange. <laughs> right? At some point, and you know what? There was no broom jumping. There was no contract signed. But there would have been a full-blown fist fight. Hair would have been pulled out. <laughs> if somebody had messed with uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. what in your mind. Yeah. Don't look at my man. On, Don't look at my woman. It's interesting. Yours. 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 Haven't made the commitment yet, yours. Then you make the commitment and you feel like, oh, it's really yours now. <laughs> Mine. I'd like to introduce you to my. That's the, you know, I'm telling you, my. They don't even say their name. This is my husband. <laughs> Hello, my husband. <laughs> yeah, this is my wife. This is my girl. This is my woman, man. Yeah, it's my dog. It's mine. This ownership piece is interesting. And yet when your life expires, well, all the stuff that you said is yours, it gets passed on. It's no longer, it's no longer in your possession. You can't control it. You can't direct it. Nothing. 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 They can even try to bury you with it. Somebody will dig it up. They buried them with what? Okay. What lot number was that again? You know, I wasn't going to the gravesite. I'm going to the gravesite now. Ownership. We're possessive with people. We're possessive with money, my money. We're possessive with our accomplishments, our project. This is what I did, our territory. We're possessions with our clothes and our shoes, all these things. We're possessive. Things that we haven't given birth to, things that we haven't purchased, and even things that haven't submitted themselves to us. We call it ours. In the scripture today, we're talking about God's ownership, that, that you belong to God. So in that criteria, we really belong to God in that he created us. He did give birth to us. He made us. We're talking about his ownership in that he did purchase us with his own blood. We're talking about creatorship, uh, ownership in that you did submit your life to him. And say, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I'm yours, Lord. You made that decision. So in all three categories, you belong to God. He made you. He bought you. You yielded to him. You gave him your heart. He's yours. You're his. He owns you. You know, that's like almost an offensive statement. He owns me? You know, there's a difference between renting and owning. A lot of people think God's relationship is like renting, where you paid a certain amount and you can use it, but it's not really yours. There are a lot of people that posture themselves towards God. They say, Lord, you can use me, but I'm not really yours. I don't, I don't really take full responsibility for this whole thing. You know, just use me. I, you, I'm renting. Well, if you bring God into the equation, um, it's almost like um, buying a house. No, let me back it up. Building a house where, where he owns the land. He has the architect. He has the plan for it. Um, he is the construction crew. He builds it. He's the interior designer and decorator. He lays it all out. And he's the banker and financier. He pays for everything. 
And he's the resident. He lives in the house. In other words, that there, there is no room to suggest that God is, is renting. Like, like you, 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 you're being rented by God. No, he owns you. He completely owns you. God, amen, has purchased you. He's birthed you. He, he resides in you. He has financed you. He is the owner. He's completely responsible. I want to talk about that. He's, he's completely, the Lord is completely responsible. Let's see what the, what, what the word says about God's ownership. In, 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 in Psalm 24, it says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that, okay. You know, that's like the slam dunk right there. I started with a slam dunk scripture. That the earth is the Lord's. Okay, well, we don't live on the moon. We don't live on Venus, Jupiter, or Mars. The whole planet is his. And the world, all the activity that goes on. And the people that lives on the planet. It's all his. The Bible says in, in Ezekiel 18 and 4, Amen, behold, all souls are mine. All of them, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. And the soul that sinneth, it shall die. You know, people say, I don't have a heaven or hell to put people. Right? Right? You don't have a heaven or hell. But God does. God says, all souls are mine. Your father and your son and yours, mine. Oh, and the soul that sins, they going to die. The Lord determines that. Why? Because we belong to God. The Bible says in Psalm 135 and 4, Israel is his peculiar treasure. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. In 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, he says, If my people, which ones, Lord? Those that are called by my name. If my people, the Lord has this sense of ownership. If my people, the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The earth is the Lord. Your soul is mine. Your body is mine. Your spirit is mine. Your father's soul, your son's soul, everything. The world and they that is all mine. Man, I'm telling you, you belong to God. To our, to our text now, the book of Isaiah. I want to I wanna open up the book of Isaiah. Uh, 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 this, this is one of the, the greatest prophecies in the Old Covenant. Uh, there is debate whether it is Elijah uh, who was the greatest prophet or Isaiah. And uh, some would uh, um, uh, taught uh, Elijah because he was a miracle worker. Uh, yet there are others that would champion uh, the cause of Isaiah because he was the eagle-eyed prophet. He, he, he saw way into the future. He prophesied into the New Testament, even into the book of Revelation, even to the day and times that we live in today. Isaiah. Isaiah has an interesting book. His book has 66 chapters. This is why a lot of people are not very familiar with the book of Isaiah because it's so long. Yet there is a chapter for every book in the Bible. 66 books of the Bible. Amen. Uh, 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 66 chapters. In the book of Isaiah, uh, Isaiah uh, could be divided up into 13 sections, into five sections, into three sections. Uh, I, I have made it very simple uh, and, and just gave you two sections of division. And that is all the prophecies that uh, were leading up to uh, Israel and Judah's um, judgment and captivity. And then all the prophecies that came uh, after um, they were restored. And so Isaiah prophesies uh, before a time of judgment uh, and then he prophesies about a lot of great things that would happen after the time of judgment. Uh, Isaiah was known for his prophecies even concerning the Messiah Jesus Christ himself. Isaiah prophesied that Christ would be born of a virgin. Isaiah prophesied that the Messiah, the promised deliverer, would be the seed of David, that he would have the key of David and open and no man could close and close and no man could open. Isaiah prophesied that his name would be called Wonderful Counsel, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. Amen. Isaiah prophesied that Christ would die, that his face, his visage would be marred beyond recognition. Isaiah prophesied, amen, about this Christ and his kingdom being established in righteousness 
that he would be a restorer of the breach and a restorer of paths to dwell in. Isaiah prophesied, amen, to God about the, the, the bondage and the, uh, the judgment of God. Isaiah challenged God's people, amen, in their hypocrisy and called them to answer for their sin and told them in no uncertain words that God was sick of their religious observances. He was sick of them playing church. He was sick of them going through all the motions. He was sick of them, amen, uh, literally offering uh, sacrifices that were not qualified to the Lord. I mean, Isaiah, he was nothing to play with. And he was very poetic and artistic in his expression. He would use metaphors um, uh, suggesting that Israel is like a farmer that had been planting and toiling for years and would only produce fruitless harvest. It would only produce a poor harvest, a rotten harvest. Amen. Isaiah would prophesy, amen, concerning the haughty women that would exalt themselves and how God was going to bring judgment upon them. Isaiah prophesied concerning how that Israel had weakened themselves by uh, not allowing the men to come forth in leadership, but the women do, amen, lead my people and the children were their oppressors. That the children got out of control because the women were were empowered to lead because they would not submit, amen, to godly leadership, amen, that was seen there in the men. I mean, Isaiah did not play. Isaiah prophesied concerning Lucifer's fall out of heaven, how that God judged Lucifer, amen, Tyra and Sidon, how that God judged nation after nation, and he wasn't playing with Israel, he wasn't playing with Judah. That's who Isaiah was. Isaiah was an eagle-eyed prophet. He was not fork-tongued. He was not double-tongued. He was not one that was passive. He was a man that had backbone and said what he meant and meant what he said. He was the preacher. He was the prophet. He was the man of God. You can get a word from God as Hezekiah. Hezekiah, amen to God. The Bible said it was Isaiah came to Hezekiah and said, Hezekiah, you're about to die. Put your house in order. You ain't got that much time to live, buddy. Hezekiah started praying and said, Lord, please, please, Lord. Please, Lord. God said, Hezekiah, uh, Isaiah, go, go back to Hezekiah and tell him, uh, I'm going to give him 15 more years. Yes, sir. Yes. Hezekiah said, how am I going to believe that? Say, uh, look at the shadow on the step there. You know, the sundown moves forward. The shadow's about to move back. It's going to move back. I mean, this is Isaiah. This man is a miracle worker. He is a prophet show enough. He got a word from the Lord. Some of the choice passages, some of the choice passages of the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter one, he's, verse 18 says, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Amen. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be a, as wool. Isaiah 6 and 8, choice passage. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. If you read Isaiah chapter 6, he begins to talk about, amen, his calling. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Look at Isaiah said, and I saw myself, woe is me. I'm unclean and I'm done. I am undone. I dwell amongst the people people of unclean lips and the Bible says he heard, he heard, he saw the seraphims and the cherubims flying from one end of heaven to the other end crying holy holy, holy Lord God almighty, the whole heaven is full of your glory, my God heaven and earth is full of your glory and the Bible said the doorposts in heaven began to shake as those seraphims began to praise God and he saw, my God heard God said, uh, I need somebody to go for me Isaiah said, if you can clean me up, Lord, if you can use anything, I'm trying to preach. You can use me. And the Bible said, here come the seraphim, took a live, amen, coal off of the altar, put it on Isaiah's lips, and Isaiah goes forth into his prophetic ministry. Look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter six, verse nine, at chapter 9, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, uh, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name 
name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. How about Isaiah chapter 40 verse 29 says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, He increaseth their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings of an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing and it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. My God. Isaiah 53 verse 1 says, Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He have no form of nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire of him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Was yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes. We are, come on somebody, Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that more. When you study the New Testament, amen, and the preachings and teachings of Christ, Christ quoted more passages out of the book of Isaiah, amen, uh, than any other passage other than the book of Psalms. Amen. Isaiah was the passage. The Bible says uh, when Jesus Christ walked into the temple, he opened up the scrolls, the Pentateuch, the, the, the books of the law, and he turned to Isaiah and began to read this very passage. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he said, this day, this scripture is for field in your eyes. Isaiah was the prophet that said it's going to be a virgin that conceives. Isaiah was the prophet that said Christ would be beaten and whipped and marred beyond recognition. And yet by his stripes we will be healed. You need to understand who Isaiah is as I build my case on today. Uh, the first part of the book of Isaiah was filled up with warnings said, all right, Judah, all right, Israel, please, y'all got to get it together. Please get it together. Don't, don't, you all are summoning the judgment of God. You can repent and avoid this national calamity. Please get right with God. Please humble yourself. Oh, don't stop worshiping these idols. Stop coming to God, going through all the motions and this, that, and the other. And then he began to prophesy, all right, y'all not going to get right. Judgment is coming. God's going to judge it. You're going to go into captivity. It's not going to go well for you. Oh, yeah, God's going to chastise you. God's going to bring some discipline to you. But in the midst of all of this, like you in trouble, in this bad news, we have our passage today, Isaiah 43, where he begins to sneak in this word of comfort and confirmation, even though they're about to, they're about to get some judgment and go through years of hardship, God comforts them with these words. He says, you are in trouble, but I need you to know you're mine. You belong to me. Yeah, you're about to go through some hardship, but even though you go through the flood and the fire, I'll be there. Even though the enemies exact upon you, I won't leave you. I won't abandon you. I've forgiven your sin. But you, you, you got to reap what you sown. You got to go through the process. You belong to me. You belong to me. Hey, it's like, it's like, it's like a, a, a father who's a judge who's got to sentence his own son, amen, to five years in the federal penitentiary. And the sentence is passed. But the judge comes off the bench, takes off his robe, wraps his arm around his son, say, I know you got to go through a little hardship here. 
but you my son, and I love you. And that, that, uh, the, what you got to go through is not going to change the fact that I'm your father, and I'm going to protect you, and I'm going to look out for you, and I'm going to bring you out of this trouble, and you're going to be restored, and you're going to have, I'm going to make all things new again. And the barren shall burst forth in the singing, and those that mourn will dance. You're going to mourn today, but you'll dance tomorrow. It's like the father saying, weep and endure for a night. But because you're mine, joy is coming in the morning. Come on, Arlene, you've had to go through some rough days, some rough times. But you know what? The Lord knows how to make it better in time. He knows how to bring healing to your heart. He knows how to restore the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, locust and caterpillar have eaten. I'm talking to one of my daughters that had to go through burying her son and watch her, her son taken down in the prime of his life. My God. And there were days in her life where she didn't think she could live another day. Days in her life that she didn't think she could make it. But some kind of way, the Lord communicated to her that you belong to me. You, you're going to have to cry, but you belong to me. You're going to go through some hardship but you belong to me I own you you are mine somebody clap their hands and say man my God my God I formed you myself let me read the text again I'm on third base now let me read the text in context amen now that you understand that Israel has gotten itself in trouble with God they're about to go into bondage but God sneaks in this word to them that lets them know and reminds them that they belong to him then on the latter end of his prophecies okay the Messiah is going to come and he's going to establish his kingdom so then the prophet began to prophesy way into the future many years even into the day that we live in today but look at the Lord sneak it in now Isaiah back to our original text chapter 43 verse 1 but now thus saith the Lord that created thee O Jacob and he that formed thee O Israel fear not for I have redeemed thee I have called thee by thy name thou art mine when thou passest through the waters I will be there and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not. For I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. Verse 21. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Let me stop right here. If you didn't hear Wednesday night's message, you need to get it. We begin to talk about the psychology of praise. Amen. That there is a logic behind praise. Sometimes it looks like, amen, the preacher and the teacher is exhorting you to praise God and it don't make any sense. It doesn't make sense to praise God in the face of adversity. It doesn't make sense to praise God when you're going, amen, through a calamity. It doesn't make sense to praise God and to give thanks to lift him up, amen, when things are not going well in your life but there is a psychology of praise praise gets God's attention oh yeah praise gets his attention I was telling the people on Wednesday night, even if you've got a friend, amen, there's a young lady, there's a man or whatever, you're trying to get somebody's attention, don't cry, don't whine to them, don't come to them complaining, come to them with praise. Nice suit you have on today. Nice tie, oh my God, your hair looks really nice today. Oh, it's great to see you today, Betty Buchanan, and you're looking good. I want to wish I can see that beautiful smile on your face. I miss your smile. I miss you. Next thing you know it, Betty's heart is endeared towards that that person that's praising them this morning I saw Elaine say oh Elaine you look nice this morning why because I love Elaine she is my daughter I want to praise her I want her amen to have a special place in her heart for me and you need to understand that we have been made at the, the image of God 
You need to learn how to praise God and thank God. He didn't have to put breath in your body today. He didn't have to give you another day thanking God for my bishop, Bishop Luther James Blackwell, celebrated 78 years old on yesterday, and he began to thank God, and in the face of, amen, our covenant brother, our spiritual father and mentor, amen, Bishop J.D. Ellis went home to be with the Lord on yesterday, and we celebrated his life and thank God, but Bishop Blackwell began to say, he took one, that's, I know, I know. you remember that? Remember that. And so here, amen, his friend, Bishop Ellis, God took Bishop Ellis, but left him. God took Bishop's wife, but left him. And he just began to thank God and praise God. You know, every now and then, you need to just thank God and praise God just because you alive. Just because you got another. You don't have to have another day. Lord, teach us to number our days. Somebody ought to raise your hand and say, Lord, thank you. I thank you. I praise you. I give you glory. I give you glory. I give you glory. Hallelujah. Let the whole church say amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. You belong to God. And so the Lord begins to say, you're going through, but you belong to me. You got some challenges coming down the pipe, but you belong to me. You're going to go through a few hard times, but you belong to me. Things may not work out the way you want them. They may not move in the time that you wanted to move in, but you belong to me. What does that mean, Elaine? What does that mean when God says, Steve, you belong to me? Number one, it means that you are my possession. You are mine to possess. You don't belong to anyone else. Number two, it means that you are mine to protect. Yeah, that's my possession, and I'm going to protect my possession. Number three, it means that you are mine to provide for. I am responsible for you. I know you work a job and save and manage, but the Lord, amen to God, is responsible for you. As David said, I was young and now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The Bible says, and my God shall supply all my need. Why? Because I belong to him. I belong to God. And so that's why I tell you, don't live your life in fear. Don't live your life in doubt. You trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Why? Because you belong to God. And you know woe to them that are picking on you. Woe to them that are hating on you. Woe to them that are setting ambushments and traps before you. My Bible said touch Touch not my, they're mine. That's my man. That's my woman. You don't touch my anointing. You don't do my prophet no harm because they belong to me. If they got to get disciplined, come on, you didn't let anybody just whoop your kids. Now, if they wrong, you come and tell me and I get them straight. But don't you put your hands on my child. I'm only preaching about five of y'all right now. But when you understand, God protects his people. God provides for his people. God possesses his people. God directs his people. You begin to live with a sense of confidence. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And if it come my way, it must mean I can bear it. Give me my microphone here. I said, if it come my way, it must mean that I can bear it. If it come my way, it must mean that God's grace is going to be sufficient, amen, for me to handle it. If it comes my way, it must mean that God is going to bring me through it. He's not going to leave me in it. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear no evil. Why? Because I belong to God. My money has got funny, but I belong to God. My, my people around me have flaked out. But I belong to God. Can you say amen? All oh, the Bible tells us that we belong to God. But the last part of the passage tells us that God had a bone to pick with his people. The Lord said, I've done all this for you. I created you. I have formed you. I made you. And when you walk through the fire, I've been, I've been right there. The floods won't overtake you. Amen. I'm going to keep your families together. I'll cause your sons from the east and your daughters from afar. The Lord said, I've done all that. He said, but you haven't honored me. You haven't remembered me. You haven't brought the offering. You haven't brought the tithe. And the Lord says, and I'm going to forgive your sin. I'm going to give you a pass. My grace is going to be sufficient for you. But 
what I want you to do is remember me. I want you to, re I want you to remember that you are not your own. Come on, Bible readers. Yeah, you got to remember that we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. That you're thankful unto him and you got to bless his name for the Lord is good. Uh, amen. His mercy is everlasting. It is he that hath made us and not we are. We are. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. That means I belong to God. I'm reminded of the words of Jesus Christ in John chapter 10 verse 29. He says, none can pluck you out of my father's hand. Oh, there's some people that want to get you out the way. There's a spirit in the world that wants to pull you away from God. But the Lord says, they belong to me. Oh my God, they belong to me. Look at the words of Jesus Christ when he looked at Peter who denied him three times Peter was lying and cursing and denying and backsliding and backpedaling and eating all of the words that he said but the Bible said that Jesus looked on Peter and loved him why because even though you're lying you're still mine even though you're denying you're still mine even though you're going the wrong way Peter you're still mine and when Jesus Christ got up out the grave he said go and get my disciples and Peter don't y'all fire Peter don't y'all get rid of Peter because he is still mine come on clap your hands right there I feel like preaching today I feel like it I feel like it I feel like it why because I know I belong to God sometimes you can look at my life and it doesn't look like I have Amen to God, I belong to God uh, sometimes you can look at the things that I possess and it doesn't look like I belong to God. Uh, uh, but I might be in a different season of developing in my life. Uh, I might even be going through reaping some things that I've sown in my life. Uh, but please don't get it twisted. I belong to God. Uh, yeah, I belong to God. Uh, like the old story of the boy that had a little sailboat. Uh, said one day he was out, my God, sailing his little boat. Uh, he had labored and made his boat. Uh, and the wind blew his boat too far to retrieve his boat and he just cried because he had lost the boat that he had made but about three months later he saw his same little boat in the downtown downtown thrift store he ran into the store and said uh, that's my boat and the man said well for five dollars it can be your boat and the boy went and painted everybody's fence and the boy went and cut everybody's grass and came back and bought his boat and when he got his boat home in his bedroom he said little boat you're mine twice you're mine cause I made you and you're mine because I bought you don't you know that you are God's twice you're God's because he made you and you're God's because he bought you you belong to God I said you belong to God I can preach for a whole nother hour but I'll conclude with one last passage there's a man named Hosea he is a prophet of the Lord he's a righteous and a godly man but the word of the Lord came unto Hosea and he said Hosea I want you to go find a wife amongst the whorish women of the city go find a loose woman go find an unfaithful woman and Hosea I want you to marry that woman and have children with that woman I want you to love that woman like she's the best woman in all the world and there's gonna be some days that that woman put on her miniskirt and tip out the back door and she gonna go into the downtown area and get involved into some scrupulous activities uh, I want you to put on your prophet's robe uh, and go right down to the strip club uh, and grab Gomer uh, and take your wife back home uh, and don't get messed up in your mind uh, but she's going to do it over and over and over again uh, she's going to be an unfaithful wife uh, but don't you divorce that woman uh, 
I want you to stay connected to her. Why? Because that's your wife. Why you want me to do that, God? Because I want to show my people that they behave the same way. But I am married to the backslider. I'm not going to kick them to the curb because they go left and right. I need the people to know they belong to me. So see, yeah. So see, yeah, yeah. I want to tell the world, I don't dot all my I's, I don't cross all my T's, but I belong to God. I don't get everything right, but I belong to God. I haven't been perfect, but I belong to God. Sometimes I'm weak, but I belong to God. Sometimes I act foolish. But I belong to God. So see, yeah. So see, yeah. I say like I say, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with the wings and run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. I say like I say, I'll be doing new things and the ears shall hear it. They shall tingle. I sing like Isaiah. Now, though your sins be as scarlet, I will wash them white as snow. So say, yeah. So say, yeah. I know I'm my wife's, I'm my wife's husband. I'm my children's father. I'm the body of Christ Assembly Bishop. But I really belong to God. Some say I'm African American, but I really belong to God. I'm a member of the College of Bishops, but I really belong to God. I'm a citizen of the United States of America. Lord have mercy. I'm a resident of Pepper Pike, but I really belong to God. You got all kinds of titles. You got everybody got their stake. They got their stake in you. But if you want to know the truth, I came in naked. I'm leaving out naked. And in the words of Jeremiah, before I was formed in my mama's womb, he knew me. He called me. So say, yeah. That's why I can't quit. Because I belong to God. I can't do what I want to do. Because I belong to God. I can't throw in the towel. Because I belong to God. Greater is he that is in me. Than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against me. Shall prosper. I can do all things. Through Christ that strengthens me. No good thing will I withhold from them that walk uprightly before me. All things work together for my good. Yeah, because I belong to God. If you belong to God, give him praise. If you belong to God, clap your hands. If you belong to God, shout, shout. Let me hear your war cry. I belong to God. 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 My children are a heritage of the Lord. My wife is a fruitful vine. My future belongs to God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. My life is in His hands. My gifting comes from God. My steps are ordered by the Lord. My eat and my drink. He opens His hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. He is my meat. He is my drink. He's my today. He's my sunrise. He's my sunset. He's the joy and the strength of my life. He is my reason. 
is my modus operandi. I, I belong to God. I'm called by his name. I'm his child. I'm his son. I'm his servant. I'm his slave. I'm his husband. I'm his wife. I'm his family. I'm his servant. I'm his subject. I'm his offspring. I'm his tree. I'm his extension. Yeah. I'm his fruit. I belong like him. I look like him. I walk like him. I talk like him. And if you fool with me, I'll heal like him. I'll save like him. I'll deliver like him. I'll preach like him. I'll prophesy like him. I belong to God. Shout on the God. Shout on the God. Let me hear your war cry. I belong to God. I belong to God. I feel like dancing. I feel like shouting. I feel like giving God some praise right where you are. Give him your praise right where you are. Bless his name right where you are. Clap your hands right where you are. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey. I belong to God. But I belong to God. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. I belong to God. I belong. Hey. I belong to God. give God that praise I belong and the proof is when he call you you will answer that's the proof when he calls you you will answer lift your hands in the presence of the Lord let's Let's rededicate ourselves to the Lord. Let's yield ourselves. Like a woman giving herself to her husband, like children that have to yield and submit themselves to their parents. Like a car that you can take and move wherever you want to. You belong to God. The old song said, I surrender all, all to thee I freely give. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I am, everything I'm not, everything I got, I'm yours. I belong to God. My ministry is not my ministry. My life is hid in God, with God in Christ. I belong to God. He sees my tears. He sees my pain. I belong to God. He knows what I'm dealing with, what I'm going through. We serve not a high priest that can't be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. I belong to God. He knows me. He knows me. I belong to God. I belong to God. I belong to God. Thank you, Lord. My God. 
Thank you, Father. Father, we renew our commitment to you. We rededicate. We acknowledge that we have been bought with a price, that we are not our own, that we don't have a choice. But our steps are ordered by you. Through the water, through the flood, through challenge, through pandemic, through change, through family, we're yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. We ask that you would cleanse us and forgive us where we have not honored you and made you first. We ask that you would cleanse us where we have not yielded ourselves to you, where we have not followed your pattern or your plan. Cleanse our hearts. Purify us. And let us walk worthy of the vocation where we've been called. Let us represent you in every way. We declare today that we belong to you. We are your people called by your name. We humble ourselves and pray and seek your face. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We turn from things that are unlike you. Heal our land. Heal our family. Heal our community. Heal our nation. We belong to you. One nation under God. Heal the nation, Lord. Let healing start all the way at the top, all the way down to the bottom. Heal the educational system, the financial system, our social relationships. Heal. Heal. We belong to you. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it. This nation belongs to you. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Thank you for the word. Now burn it in our hearts and let us never be the same again. In Jesus' name, let God's people say amen. Come on, clap your hands for the good word of God. You belong to God. You belong to God. God bless you. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Those of you all that are watching online, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got your word today. Amen. I like to, I like to holler it out, scream a little bit, get excited. That's the, that's the tradition I was raised in. When I get excited, I want to holler. But whether we're hollering or talking, I hope you get the message today. And that is that you belong to God. You're not going through something the Lord doesn't know. You belong to God. Dialysis, dialysis, dialysis. You belong to God. Yeah. He says the solitary in the family. God knew a man what you needed so much blessing I was just thinking through some things John praying for you this week so God God gave you a choice isn't that something he knows that exactly what you need you got a choice so even though you challenged with this and challenged with that God has met your need because you belong to God you belong to God and that goes for every one of us whatever you're dealing with got to know you belong to God he's going to give you what you need exactly what you need to bring glory to his name to bring praise to his name amen I, I came across uh, Leonard a book that you wrote 20 years ago my special gift God gave Leonard a special gift something like that you remember the book and look what God has done. Incredible. My God will supply your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good word for us today. Good word. Good word. <clears throat> Good word for us today. You belong to God. All right. All right. We're going to prepare our hearts to honor the Lord today. We're going to prepare our hearts to give God the tithe. If you're watching, we want you to navigate on your screen and get ready to honor the Lord with your tithe. You know, the last part of the passage there in Isaiah 43, that was a powerful passage. I created you. I formed you. I protect you. But then he said, but you haven't honored me. You haven't brought me to sweet cane. You haven't brought me to fat of the offering. You haven't kept me first. That's interesting. That's interesting. Amen. That's interesting. People are committed to paying their rent and their mortgage. They're committed to paying their car. They're committed to paying the IRS. They're committed to, and yet, <clears throat> honoring God is more important than all of that. Amen. 
Honoring God is more important than all of that. I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning ministering and sharing and uh, just sharing in the ministry with a prophet Bernard Jordan. He just began, we just, just going, I just couldn't get to, <laughs> I couldn't get off the phone. I was trying, but he kept prophesying and kept speaking the word of the Lord. And, and I'm beginning to interpret different things. And we were going back and forth, just iron sharpening iron and ministering to each other. And the Holy Spirit reminded me of this special seed that we have been uh, reaching out for, the $25,000 seed. Um, maybe around 3 o'clock this morning, I, I, I began to... Uh, see myself mentoring and pouring into individuals and um, I was talking to him about it he said yeah I take 12 people every year and um, there's an incredible um, sacrifice that they make but for a year he takes 12 people and he takes them to a whole nother level and uh, I said well you know I, I want to begin to pray about developing that type of ministry I pastor and I mentor on a certain level but sometimes I don't give all of myself to people because they don't make a sacrifice. They don't match your intensity. A few of y'all get that. A few of y'all get that. They, they don't match your intensity. I, I remember Lois Blackwell, Bishop's wife, who's going home to be with the Lord 30 days ago. About 18 years ago, my wife had these surgeries and about eight surgeries. She almost lost her life. It was pretty intense stuff. And um, I remember Thanksgiving came around and a couple of days before Thanksgiving, I brought my wife home. And uh, no big deal. We just there and trying to get through it. And uh, Sister Blackwell called me to her house and I came over her house and she had prepared for me a full Thanksgiving meal for like 20 people. You remember that, sweetheart? And I had to stack all this stuff. I mean, full big old turkey dressing, candy yams. Uh, she didn't leave nothing out, like macaroni and cheese, had the uh, cranberry sauce, the potato salad, some cakes, some pies, some string beans, greens. I mean, full, the, just the whole deal. I couldn't put all this stuff in my car. I was so blessed and overwhelmed that she would take the last three days and prepare for my family a full Thanksgiving meal because she knew that my wife was in the hospital and I, you know, I don't care nothing about all that stuff. But you know, my kids and I got family and stuff. And I was able to take that stuff home and I said, wow, why would you do that? That's such a blessing. She said, I at least want to match your intensity. The way you serve my husband, the way you submit, the way you give and tithe and support him and his ministry, this is the least I could do, what she said to me. I was so blessed to know I'm in a relationship where somebody's willing to match my intensity. Have you ever been in one of those lopsided relationships where you're doing amazing stuff? And, and others never come up to match your intensity. Well, today I challenge you. There are 13 of you that's going to sow $1,000. And there are six that will be inspired to manage a $25,000 gift to the work of the Lord. And I want to covenant with those six. I want to take those six. I want to take you for a year and transform your life. I want to help Water sees a potential that are in you. But you got to make a sacrifice. Sow it into the kingdom of God. Endear me. Match my intensity. I have people say, Bishop, would you pour into me? Would you, would you spend some time? Because I know what that means. Like, I, I know what that means. I know what it means. I know what it means. I know what that means. I know what that means. So I want to put that out there. There's some people that are watching. There's some people in this room that need to hear the word of the Lord today. The Holy Spirit is calling upon you, stretching you to another level 
of sacrifice to another level of seed sowing. God wants to impart something life-changing. He wants to change your trajectory. You ever seen those? I missed the air show. You ever seen those planes that take off? And they go straight up. Like, whoa. God wants to change your trajectory. Sometimes you got to sow into it. And here's the thing you need to know. You belong to God. In God's kingdom, you can't lose. You can't, you can't lose in God's kingdom. I don't know, that happened to me years ago in my mind. I understand. David says, I only can give what you've given to me. I'm giving out of your hand. Yeah, David says, you know, he gives this great offering. He says, I thank you that we can call this an offering. Because I'm only giving what you have given to me. It's as if he was saying, how can I give anything since everything belongs to you? So whatever I give, I have to thank you for allowing me to call it an offering. Because at any given moment, you can get it all. You just take your breath. So while we're sitting around trying to act like it's ours. No, you belong to God. And everything that you have belongs to God. Use wisdom and faith and honor him. Bow your heads where you are. Father, I've given to them what you've given to me. Even in this offering appeal, let us yield ourselves to you in the tithe. And even in the sacrificial offering, touch the hearts of those that will invest in your kingdom. Bless the work of God. Multiply it back to them a hundred times is my prayer. Bless this house and then bless their house. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you need an envelope, raise your hand in the room. If you need an envelope, amen. Our, our stewards will, so, will, will serve you if you need an envelope. Raise your hand. Give the Lord your tithe. Bring the tithe. Amen. The Lord's going to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you don't have room to receive. God's going to do that. Amen. There's some that can give an offering of $50. Would you sow that today? Some can release an offering of $100. You do that today in Jesus' name. Bless the house of God. Bless the house of God. Someone recently brought me a gift. Say, Bishop, I want to give $100 to you. I know it's not much. I said, what do you mean? That's a whole lot. What are you talking about? It's not much. Are you kidding me? Hey, don't ever downplay your gift. It's $20. Don't downplay it. If it's meaningful to you, it's meaningful to God. But always remember, if what you give don't mean, don't mean that much to you, it don't mean that much to God. It's your level of sacrifice. I'm telling you, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit pulling. He's pulling, pulling, pulling on someone to step up and sow that $25, $25,000 seed. He's pulling on you. He's pulling on you to release that to the Lord. You need to move in God, move in faith, and watch what the Lord does in your life. Stop glorifying $100 like in some regard, that's your ceiling. That's your roof. It's not your ceiling. You go beyond that. I got, I got members give on that level all the time. In Jesus' name, God wants to take them even higher in their giving. You give and watch God bless your life. You belong to God. You belong to God. Come on, sweet. All right, all right, all right. I'm telling you, the word of God is good. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. I'm ministering to you the good word of God. And I pray that you would be inspired today to sow your seed. I am looking for partners, those that will um, commit to a monthly seed, commit to a weekly seed, or even honoring the Lord with their tithe. I want you to connect with me as we go to all the world preaching this gospel. Yes, we are feeding the hungry. Yes, we are serving our seniors as well as our youths. And I need your support. With that, if this word has blessed you, if this ministry is blessing you, you need to navigate on your screen and commit your seat, give, 
and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. The Lord is going to cause his blessing to run over in your life. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark. Until next time, peace to the family.